Hey guys, this is Helping Hands bringing you part three of the OKW Bootcamp for Company of Heroes 2. In this video, I'll be talking about Tier 4, the Schwerpanzer headquarters for the OKW. I will talk about how to take to Tier 4, the units in Tier 4, and at the end of the video, I'll briefly go over some commanders for the OKW faction that I recommend you to play. Before we start, I just want to remind everybody, if you are enjoying these videos, please do hit the subscription button. Let's begin. First, let's discuss how to tech to Tier 4. The OKW faction has two options to tech to Tier 4. They either place down the battle group headquarters and then upgrade it with the mechanized battle support group. And then once that is done, they then can call on the SWS half supply half track and then set up the Shrap Panzer headquarters. The second way is instead of putting the battle group headquarters down, you instead put the mechanized down. And then once this is down, you can then straight away then bring up the Shrap Panzer headquarters and put that down. The best way to quickly check up to the Schwerpanzer headquarters, guys, is to go through the battle group attack. Because if you click on a SWS truck, you can see that the fuel cost for the battle group headquarters is only 10 fuel and its upgrade itself is 20 fuel. Where, as if you want to go for the mechanized, you'd be spending 45 fuel. And also, if you're going to go for the mechanized, you're generally going to be making a vehicle out of this as well, which is going to delay you taking up to the Schwerpanzer headquarters further. When placing your Schwerpanzer headquarters, it's extremely important to make sure it is facing the right way. You always want the gun facing towards the enemy. So on this map, our enemy is to the north, so we place the Schwerpanzer headquarters pointing north. That way, when your enemies immediately encroach into the line of sight of this vehicle, uh, the Schwerpanzer headquarters will start firing immediately. If it's facing the wrong way, like this, the gun's going to turn around and then start firing. Where, and that will buy enough time for your opponent to recognize they're in danger and retreat away without taking any damage. So make sure always the Schwerpanzer headquarters is facing the right way. The Schwerpanzer headquarters costs 100 manpower and 90 fuel to place down, and 100 manpower and 30 fuel for the Panther authorization. So when you want to do place down a Schwerpanzer headquarters, guys, you want to make sure that it is being useful and covering a point, and it can because it can effectively defend it against infantry attacks, and it's pretty good against light and to medium armor. So, for instance, on this map, we could potentially pop our Schwerpanzer headquarters up so it can cover this munitions point. So here we can see the max range of the Schwerpanzer headquarters indicated by the green dot. So we just want to make it move slightly forward just so it fully encompasses the point like there. And then again, make sure to face it the right way and then set it up like so. Before the Schwerpanzer headquarters can actually start firing, guys, it needs to be upgraded. So you click on the Schwerpanzer headquarters and then you click on Panzer Authorization. This will then enable the flak half to start firing for 100 manpower and 30 fuel. It also will then unlock you to be able to build the Jagdpanzer, the Panzer IV and the Panther from this building so let's upgrade it then once it's upgraded you can see two men that now man the gun and if enemies come into the range of this area highlighted by the uh, this the green dots in the in this circle they will get shot at by the Schwer Panzer headquarters the Schwer once it has finally been bought with Panzer authorization if you do lose the Schwer Panzer headquarters and want to rebuild it it doesn't need to be upgraded again with Panzer authorization before you upgrade Panther Authorization, however, you still do have access straight away to the Obersol Darton. So you can get them out before going for the Panzer Authorization if you decided to do that. Now, let's get onto the units inside the Schwerpanzer headquarters. First up, we have the Obersol Darton. A veteran and elite infantry squad can be equipped with an MG34 light machine gun, effective against infantry at long range, costing 340 manpower and 9 population cap. Next up we have the Jagdpanzer, a very effective tank destroyer at range, costing 400 manpower, 135 fuel and 15 population cap. After the Jagdpanzer comes the Panzer IV Ost-J medium tank variant. Effective against most targets, good all-rounder, however susceptible to heavy anti-tank assault gun fire. Costing 380 manpower, 140 fuel and 14 population cap. Finally we have the Panther medium tank in tier 4. It is effective against all armor targets, but not very good against dealing with infantry with AT equipment. Costing 490 manpower, 185 fuel, and 18 population cap. There is another unit which is non-doctrinal, which means you don't got to pick a commander for this for every single OKW player, and that is the Cornix Tiger, also known as the King Tiger. Right here is the button to press to call on a King Tiger. You can requisition a King Tiger once the commander has been selected, because it's a call on ability, and you have all your tech upgraded. So you need your mechanized down, you need your battle grouper down and upgraded, and you also need your Schwerpanzer controls down and upgraded as well. Once all those, those conditions are met, you can then call on the Cornix Tiger. 
the King Tiger, an absolute beast of a machine, very good against every unit in the game, and it has a lot of armor and health. However, it is let down by its speed and maneuverability, costing 720 manpower, 270 fuel, and 23 population cap. You are limited to only one of these on the battlefield at a time. So guys, here we have some Obersoldaten, two variants of the Obers. We've got the Obers here upgraded with the MG34 for 80 munitions. And we also have some Obers over here upgraded with infrared SDG44 package, which costs 60 munitions. This can only, you can only get this upgrade if you choose um, a specific commander, which allows it. This is the ability here. Otherwise, your Obers will just be able to come with the MG34 upgrade. The Obers with the S infrared SGGs are able to spot camouflage units a lot easier than most units. And they only have two SGGs on the on the squad. The other two guys come with car 98s. They are also good at chasing down squads, good at medium, better at uh, closer ranges with those SGGs. The other squad, the other Obers variant with the MG34, better at, generally at range. However, the Obers, what they can do is they can fire their MG on the move, which most infantry cannot. So here we go, guys. I'm just going to demonstrate this. The Grenadier squad over here has an MG as well. But you'll notice that when I try and move and attack the Conscript squad over here, um, the MG will not fire while I'm while I'm moving. I have to be stationary. So if I move forward, you'll notice that the Car 98 guys will fire, but my MG go will not fire unless until I stay still, and then he will start firing. Okay. So let's just now show you guys the difference here with the Ober squad. As these guys are badass and elite infantry. They know how to handle their weapons. And you can see that the lead guy with the MG, as soon as he gets under fire, he's going to start firing the MG on the move. Like so. Both over variants come with these abilities. They both come with bundle grenades for 35 munitions, just like the Panzer Grenadier's bundle grenade. They can also booby trap points. So if enemies come over to the point, they'll get exploded, as I'll now show. Here they go, they're booby trapped on the point. There you go, the point is now booby trapped. For 40 missions, and let's say a penal squad over here was sort of trying to come over and take the point, they will get exploded and take a lot of damage. There you go. So, not many men killed, but a lot of the health of that squad has been neutralized. And now, if I get involved with my others, it should be an easy win for me to finish off this penal squad. It's also worth noting that you do generally do want to be stationary with the MG rather than on the move. As if you are stationary, you are generally more accurate. Obers also have some other abilities here which require Veteran C. So Veteran C1, they unlock the Blend and Corp 2H uh, um, Frangible Smoke Grenade. This is like a white phosphorus grenade that goes off and slows enemy units that, that get inside the, this kind of smoke and also damages them over time, as I'll now show. So here we go. Let's say you got some conscripts charging you. Like so. What you might want to do is lob the Blend and Corp Grenade. That will slow the enemy units in the area. They'll take damage while being inside the area. And they won't be able to see you too clearly either. Because obviously it's smoke as well. And you can see as they're staying in this. They're taking considerable amount of damage. And then as they're also slow. You're going to maybe follow that up with a normal grenade. Bundle grenade. And if they try to retreat. They won't be able to retreat fast enough. Because they are slowed in, in, in the smoke. And uh, that grenade will be able to help you out. So it's a good idea to maybe combine these two abilities. If you have the munitions. As you're a lot e you have a lot easier time of finishing off conscripts or any type of infantry unit if it's slowed by this grenade, the smoke grenade, and then followed up with a bundle grenade. Over ranks are as follows. Rank 2, combat and training increases squad weapon accuracy and weapon control while under fire. Rank 3, field craft and training enables the squad to heal themselves over time when out of combat. Increases survivability, which is great, so they can just heal without being near um, the battle group headquarters, for instance, which is great. Version C4 unlocks the suppressive fire ability. And Veteran C5, increased fitness means the squad can move more quickly for prolonged periods of time. So let's do that. So now they've got up to past Veteran C3. You can see they're now healing out of combat. They have to be out of combat. They don't kill in combat. And the final Veteran C there, there you go. So you can see here that they have sprint. While out of combat and can move fast, this is what they're getting with Veteran C5. So they naturally just sprint around the, the map now. And then once they get into combat, they'll stop sprinting. So let's just prove this real quick. Let's come over here, put down a conscript squad again. So as soon as they get into combat, they lose the sprint and they lose their ability to heal. But it's a great way for them to maybe chase forward and get back into the fight a lot quicker once they retreat back to base. Vet 5 Obers are probably one of the best units in the game. 
um, alongside Panzer Fusiliers. They are very, very good, and I highly recommend um, getting them late game. The only thing they suffer with, though, guys, is they haven't got any AT capability. So they're going to be practically useless against even light, like, like, light vehicles. Let's say even an M20 from the American shows up, the Obers won't be able to deal with it, right? Because they've got no AT capability. So you're going to have to have them in conjunction with some kind of maybe rocket and weather or, other, or a tank to be useful. This is their veterancy 4 ability, Suppression. Accurate fire from open soldat and squads will force hostile squads to the ground. We are now going to activate Suppressing Fire. And we are slowing the enemy down, and you can see they're instantly getting slowed here. So it's a great way, let's say, if you wanted to hit a high value target. Let's, for instance, say something like a shock squad. Veteran C3 shock squad was charging you. So here we have a Veteran C3 squad charging us. Let's now activate the suppression on them. So we slow them down and then they get suppressed. And squads that are suppressed to hardly do any damage. So that suppression is actually free. It doesn't cost you anything. That suppression lasts a short, short while. Which you buy enough time to reposition and back to friendlies, or you might just want to take the fight like this, and you can see we're winning against this shock squad. There we go. And that is the Obel Soldaten. So next we're on to the Jagdpanzer. Now the Jagdpanzer is a good long range tank destroyer, but it can't take much punishment itself, and it's very susceptible to infantry um, fire, AT fire, as well as um, anti tank gun fire, and also enemy tank destroyers. It also starts with prioritized vehicles enabled, which you can see by the symbol above its head, this yellow icon here. If you decide to click free fire, it will then start engaging any targets, but you never really wanted it to do that because it's terrible against infantry, which will never kill any infantry at all, really. Um, so you might as well just always just have it left on prioritized vehicles. You can also hold fire with the vehicles so that you can um, not reveal yourself. And efficiency one, it gains the ability to camouflage and get a good first shot once it fires out of camouflage, as I'll show in a minute. The Agpanzer itself has got a fixed turret, which means that it has to rotate the whole vehicle around to get a shot off on enemy units. So if I wanted to attack around to the right, I have to turn to shoot. It's very similar to an SU-85 or a Stug in this regard. So let me give you some examples of the Jagdpanzer. So let's, go, let's talk about the Jagdpanzer's veterancy requirements. Let's now go on to the ranks of the Panzer IV. Let's now go on to the ranks of the Jagdpanzer. Rank 1 adds cautious movement ability, which makes the Jagdpanzer harder to detect. Veteran C2. Veteran tanks received armored skirts and improved optics, improving durability and sighting. Veteran C3. Battle hardened crews operate the vehicle with greater efficiency, increasing mobility and rate of fire. Veteran C4. Veteran crews improve the rate of fire and accuracy of the main gun. And finally, Veteran C5. When attacking out of camouflage, the Jagdpanzer will have a better chance to penetrate armor and inflict a greater amount of damage. Notice how it doesn't see behind itself. It's not very good at spotting behind. It needs friendly units to give itself vision to the side, so it doesn't give itself 360 degree vision because it has that fixed turret. There we go, Veteran C1. There we go, we unlock the cautious movement, so we activate that, and we can become invisible. It's basically camouflage. Also, if we hold fire, we then don't reveal ourselves, so this allows us to set up a good am ambush, potentially. Veteran C2. There we go. Veteran C3. Veteran C4. And finally, Veteran C5. So we can see here the Jagdpanzer doesn't gain any increased vision at all. But a Veteran C5, it gains the first strike. Attacking enemy out of camouflage will do more damage and have a higher chance to penetrate. Also, when it is under cautious movement, it is incredibly slow. So this is, this is his speed. Where it's with cautious movement, you turn cautious movement off. Like so. And then it becomes a lot faster. So the Jagdpanzer can actually shoot further than it can see. As you can see, that's a, as his attack ground can just shoot all the way up to there. Therefore, it's, it'll need something to spot for it. And as I pointed out in my previous boot camp video, in boot camp part two for the OKW, a infrared half check would work really well with the Jagdpanzer as the infrared half check would be able to spot for it. And then set it up, and then we'll get the extra bonus there, the extra vision. And now we're, we, this is now providing line of sight to the Jagdpanzer to fire at its max range. So a good combination of units there. So with the first strike bonus, you'll see that the Jagdpanzer, uh, even against an SU-85 Vision C3, should have the edge here. So here we go. As we have their first strike bonus, we do a little bit of extra damage there. Now 
And there we go. Take that issue 85 out in about four hits, and we took about 60% damage ourselves. So I just want to give you guys an example of what, how effective heat rounds can be on the Yagpans. So heat rounds is an ability that you can gain from choosing the Elite Armor Doctrine. So guys, here I'll show you guys the Veterancy 5 Jagdpanzer with cautious movement. So it has the first, first strike chance as well. So it's higher chance to penetrate and do more damage. And then we're going to activate heat rounds as well. So this Jag, this uh, Jagdpanzer can do a lot of damage here against this uh, Pershing with its first shot. So we activate heat rounds. We turn off whole fire. Then we fire in and boom. Already about a third health of the um, Pershing dead. And we almost can pretty much four shot the Pershing with this. There you go. Five shots and quite rapid fire. Easy air with the table Pershing. Not a single bounce there in sight. Thanks to the activation of the heat rounds. But guys, I just want to warn you that yes, the Eggpans is very good. However, if it gets flanked, it's royally screwed, as I now show. So even like a this is a Veteran C5 Yagpanzer. If the C34 manages to come up behind it and starts flanking it, yeah, we'll take might take a couple of hits on, 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 on our rush forward hit onto the Eggpanzer. But once we get behind it. We should easily be able to out out maneuver it and just keep killing it before it can do anything against us here, right? So make sure to back up your Jagdpanzer with other units to support it. So in summary guys, a vetted Jagdpanzer will do very well against all armor targets. However, a brand new one will do fairly average against other armor targets, other tank destroyers that is, still do quite well against normal medium targets, but it will trade fairly evenly against other tank destroyers. For instance, the SU-85 uh, is a fairly even matchup against that. The Jackson as well, fairly even matchup there. As long as the Jagdpanzer is got, you know, firing main gun forward. If it is flanked, however, as we just saw, it will not do very well at all and will die quite easily. So make sure you're backing it up. So next, guys, we have the Panzer IV Os J medium tank variant. Compared to other Panzer IVs, it's, it's generally better. It's got the armored skirts and also has its smoke. In every Panzer IV, it can go up to uh, Registry 4 and 5, which makes it more lethal. Um, compared to things like a T-3476 and a Sherman and a Cromwell, it does better against those than just a standard Ostia Panzer IV, for instance. And also, it's a fairly even match up against the T-3485 variant because this is like the upgraded Panzer IV. The Panzer IV could be upgraded for 50 munitions, to get a pistol mounted MG42 machine gun, as you can see on top, he's already there, which increases its anti infantry capability. And the veterancy ranks for the Panzer IV are as follows Veterancy 1 adds the combat blitz ability, increases the movement speed of the Panzer IV at the cost of rate of fire and accuracy. Veterancy 2 Veteran crews operate the main gun with higher frequency, hasting target acquisition, and weapon accuracy. Veterancy 3 Battle hardened crews improve vehicle mobility and rate of fire. Version C4, advanced sighting and targeting enabled the main gun to be pushed even further, increasing accuracy. And finally, version C5, elite crews operate the Panzer IV with extreme proficiency, increasing sight range when stationary and firing the main gun more effectively on the move. Here's variant 1, rank 2. So notice rank 1 unlocks its combat blitz, costing 30 missions, allows it to maybe, you know, you activate this if you want to get out of dodge real quick. For instance, an enemy is bearing down upon you, and you activate that to, to quickly reverse away. Or let's say you want to try and chase down a mini unit or enemy vehicle that's super low health, you pop it maybe to, to catch up to it and, and finish and get in the killing blow. Veteran C3, Veteran C4, and Veteran C5. So, let's see 5 after a few seconds, the Panzer IV does gain the increased vision. If you wait now, you'll see it gets the, the eyesight, and that allows it to shoot at its max range. As soon as it moves or rotates on the spot, it loses its extra vision, as you just see. But if you wait about 5 seconds, you'll then see the icon overhead, which means it's getting the extra vision, and you get a little bit more. So here, guys, I'll just give you a quick example of a Panzer IV fighting up against a Cromwell. This should be a fairly even fight. Out of the Panzer IV, you know, if I did this like 10 times in a row, the Panzer IV would come out on top most times because the Cromwell is more likely to bounce the Panzer IV than the Panzer IV is likely to bounce the Cromwell. So here we go, section own enemy, and off we go with the engagement. This time, actually, the Cromwell bounce. There we go, about one bounce each.
And there you go, you can see overall Panzer IV did win the engagement. It was close though. We know one more bounce to the Panzer IV. If the Cromwell would pen, that would be a dead Panzer IV. But, you know, Panzer IV does do better, you know, the majority of the, of the fights. So here is the Panzer IV's effectiveness against infantry. If the Panzer IV is stationary, obviously it's going to be, it's mainly going to be a lot more accurate. But it's very good at smashing uh, down infantry squads. As you can see. And if we were to hit, for instance, the rifle squad against cover. So we come around the side and hit it from here. We should do a nice meaty shot because it clumped up. There you go, two men down. The next shot probably should wipe the squad. Almost. You can see the pistol out machine gun is doing quite a lot of work as well to the side. So yeah, Panzer IV making quick work of enemy infantry. So there you guys have it, Panzer IV. Finally in tier 4 we have the Panther Panzer V medium tank. Like the Panzer IV can also upgrade a pistol mounted MG42 machine gun for the same price at 50 munitions. And that also then increases its effectiveness against enemy infantry. The Panther is a very good unit against armor targets. Not so good against enemy infantry. However, it does have, obviously, the pistol map machine gun and a coaxial machine gun at the bottom here. So that will be decent against infantry. But its main gun will not be effective against infantry like the Panzer IV would be. The Panther's ranks are as follows. Virtual Seat Rank 1 adds the Combat Blitz ability. So, as we already know that, it's the same kind of ability that the Panzer IV has. Activates a, a speed boost at the, the expenditure of rate of fire and accuracy. Virtual Seat Rank 2. Veteran tanks received improved weapon tracking and armor. Veteran C3, battle hardened crews improve vehicle mobility and rate of fire. Veteran C4, advanced sighting and targeting enable the main gun to be pushed even further, increasing accuracy. And finally, Veteran C5, elite crews operate the Panther with extreme proficiency, increasing the sight range when stationary and firing their main gun more effectively on the move. So again, same kind of ability there that you saw on the Panzer IV. Let's just show you guys the effectiveness of, uh, of the Panther against enemy vehicles. So... Against something typical like an American Sherman, the Panther actually has decent range as well. Actually outranges most medium tanks. As you can see here, I can hit the, the Sherman without ever being able to return fire. But even if the Sherman did return fire, it would have a hard time penetrating the, the Panther compared to something like the Panzer IV. As you can see there, there's a the bounce. And the Panther will effectively four-shot a Sherman. And pretty much will never bounce on a Sherman. There you go. Easy deals with the Sherman and only took, what, 10% damage himself. So, guys, here we have enemy tank destroyers. We have the British Firefly, the American Jackson, and the Soviet Su-85. All of these can outrange the Panther, as on our show. I'm just going to make the Panther invincible for this demonstration. So, the Panther's main range is about, about up to here. You can see that if each one of these things will be able to hit my Panther. H-35 can hit me. If I move slightly forward, you'll see that the Jackson and the Firefly will hit me as well. And I can't return fire onto those units. I have to get closer to be able to return fire. So, Panther, yes, it can take a bit of a beating. Um, takes about probably maybe four or five shots from these units here um, to kill me. So the thing is, though, guys, all three enemy tank destroyers that you just saw then, they have to have vision to be able to spot the Panther. They don't. They need something to spot for themselves. However, the Su-85 can activate its focus vision, which gives it the vision, but in, uh, at the cost of reduced speed. So you can use that to your advantage uh, there. So let's say we are going to. The Panther's going to try and deal with this Jackson here. The Jackson's going to fire on me. Possibly can miss. And then once we get into range, it takes us about maybe four shots to kill the Jackson. Jackson, about five. Bear in mind, though, that the Jackson has an activated armor-piercing rounds. Well, there we go. We have killed the Jackson. And we have about half health left. Against the Su-85, we just need to go up to it and flank around it to kill it. Up against the, um, the Firefly. Again, the Firefly's turret traversal is very slow, so we can easily circle strafe around the Firefly with the Panther, for instance. So, Pershing is grey against tanks and against infantry. Um, against the Panther, it would be fairly even a matchup. So here we go. Let's engage here. 
I think we actually outranged the Pershing, so... So we can see we can just slightly outrange the Pershing. We move slightly forward. The Pershing would, would probably fire on us. There we go. So we'll just see here. I think it's probably about five or six shots for the for us, for the Panther to kill the Pershing. And for the Pershing, it's about the same, to be honest. However, the Pershing has got a armor-piercing round, which does a lot of damage as well. So it's a fairly even fight, as you can see here. However, uh, what the Pershing has, it's got that, it's got really good anti infantry capability as well. Whereas the, um, the Panther does not. So fortunately for us, we have penetrated every shot from the front. Sometimes we might bounce the front line of a Pershing. But this time, every shot was on target and we penetrated it and killed it. So there you go, Panther, effective against the Pershing. And, and pretty much the same thing against like the IS-2, um, and, and also the ISU-152 and Churchill's. Um, against Churchill's, the Panther, doesn't take much damage and the Churchill's have a very hard time of penetrating uh, the armor of the Panther whereas the Panther doesn't have the same issue so yeah the pa Panther would always beat up beat, beat the Churchill so here we have three infantry sections let's try and engage them with the Panther so you can see our main gun won't be do doing much damage here against squads in the open what's doing the damage here is the Pinto machine gun and the Quaxel machine gun main round just keeps missing but don't discount Pencil machine gun the crack, so it does do quite a lot of damage quite quickly killing that um, every section out in the open. If you want to get the main gun of the Panther to be effective here, you want to do what we did beforehand, like with the Panther, well, come round and try and hit the, the, um, the infantry section when they're trapped up against cover, and then you can see that the main gun was effective because the, the, the round has got nowhere else to go. So you're more likely to get hits here with the main gun. Let's try again here. So there you go, that main round shot killed two models. So even though its main gun is supposed to be only good against tanks, if you fire it correctly up against units in a trap to up against cover and you flank them, it can be quite effective. So there you guys go. That is the Panther. And finally, guys, we have the Koenigsteiger, the King Tiger. Once more, you can upgrade it with a Pintle mounted machine gun for 50 munitions. Effective against infantry. So the King Tiger, really good against tanks, really good against infantry. Uh, it's got everything going for it apart from the fact that it's slow and it's got a very poor turret traversal. As you can see, it's quite slow to turn its turret, so it means if it does get flanked, it's going to get punished quite severely. The veteran ranks for the King Tiger are as follows. Rank 1, Spearhead. Tactics increase the combat power of the vehicle, but restricts turret rotation to the front of the tank. Efficiency 2, Elite crews operate the King Tiger with great efficiency, acquiring targets faster with greater accuracy. Efficiency 3, King Tiger navigates the battlefield with ease and fires with greater frequency. Efficiency 4, Battle Hardened officers better synchronize their crew, increasing vehicle mobility. And Efficiency 5, unlocks the Combat Blitz ability. So, unlike your standard uh, your Panther and your Panzer 4, this unit gets the Blitz once it gets Efficiency 5. So guys, I'm just going to prove to you how slow the King Tiger is compared to, for instance, like a Panzer IV. So I'm going to get the King Tiger to start moving towards this side over here. And you'll notice that the Panzer IV would easily be able to outmaneuver it and, get, and actually catch up to it and overtake it in a matter of seconds. As you can see here, we're already past the King Tiger. Like so. So there you go, King Tiger, very slow. And I'll just show you guys the turret rotation difference, for instance. So let's say the Panzer, let's try and get them to fire 90 degrees to the right. So click both, get them both to fire 90 degrees to the right. Here we go. And you can see the Panzer IV, boom, already got the shot off. Tiger still waiting to turn and fire and get the shot off. There you go. So the time it took for the King Tiger to turn around and fire one shot, the Panzer IV was able to fire twice. So guys, I'm just going to show you, demonstrate the spearhead ability, which you gain at Veteran C1. When you activate it, you gain a big boost to your vision in front. The King Tiger can actually shoot further than it can see, as most vehicles, like most vehicles, you can shoot up to about here, as you can see there. If we activate the spearhead mode, pay attention here, you gain increased vision all the way around the Tiger. However, what that does mean, the Tiger can only shoot in a 90 degree angle in front of itself. If I was to try and shoot to the right, over here, the, the whole Tiger has to turn itself to start to, to shoot over to that direction. Like so. Generally though, it's pretty much always a good idea to have the spearhead on if you're taking frontal engagements. As soon as you get flanked, for instance, though, and you want to maybe get your, your tank to turn and deal with an enemy on the right-hand side, what you do is you uh, turn off spearhead. Takes 14 seconds to be able to cool down and reuse that ability. 
So then you can now just immediately shoot to the right. And what you'd probably do is turn, and reverse your tank around, and get the shot off like so. Okay. So spearhead focusing on frontal assault. The king tank has faster turret rotation, a longer sight range, but the turret is locked to 90 degrees. Also, the spearhead ability can allow the king tiger to track enemy units more quickly. So let's now get the king tiger to fight up against um, uh, medium armor from the allies. So let's say, for instance, a standard T-34. We're fighting up against a standard T-34 here. So T-34 hasn't got great range, as you can see here. So if we had the spearhead mode enabled, and uh, we made this an enemy T-34, and we move forward slightly to spot it, we can hit the um, hit the enemy T-34 without the T-34 firing back on us, because we outrange it. And we absolutely smash it, smash standard medium vehicles like this. And even if the uh, T-34 was to engage us, it's highly likely the T-34 bounces on a King Tiger's armor. It's quite rare for a T-34 to actually penetrate the front line of a, of a, a Tiger, a King Tiger at that. And even from the rear, it's more likely to penetrate from the rear. However, it still can even bounce on the rear armor of, of, of the King Tiger. Um, let's say up against uh, tank destroyers. Now, again, up against tank destroyers, for instance, the SU-85 will be able to outrange a King Tiger. As you can see, our maximum range of the SU-85 is quite significant. King Tiger can fire up to about here. Whereas if the SU-85 was an enemy, selection owner enemy, the SU-85 would start smashing us uh, if it had the sight bonus on. So let's just turn the fucker off just, uh, just to say that it does have it on. So it starts shooting me now. We'll move forward, just slightly forward, we'll just start zooming, there we go. And uh, the SU-85 doesn't do too too badly against penetrating the front line of the King Tiger. Sometimes it'll bounce. So it's a bit kind of 50-50 sometimes. The more veteran see that the SU-85 has, the more chance it will have to pen. So it takes about maybe 15% damage each time the SU-85 penetrates the King Tiger. So guys, you want to be really careful with the... Um, with the King Tiger by not feeding veteran seed to the enemy uh, tank. So here we have the, the SU-85's penetrated just three times on the King Tiger. has already gained veteran C1. If we were to engage the SU-85, we'd, we'd kill it quite quickly, however. So probably three shot the SU-85. But yeah, the SU-85 really having a hard time penetrating the frontal armor of the King Tiger. There we go. Now, if we manage to flank around the King Tiger, we should do quite well. So again, shoot from the front, not going to be successful. But if we do get behind the King Tiger, King Tiger now, as it's got the turret traversal locked on on this this this, this, this King Tiger, it can't really rotate around with its main gun, so you can have to turn it off, as you can see. King Tiger's now in trouble, and then we can keep circle flanking, and eventually we'll kill the King Tiger. If this T-34 can land a single shot, that is. There you go. So if we focus on the rear on, uh, on the rear armor, we're much more likely to penetrate the King Tiger, as you can see here from the T-34. So we're constantly trying to keep the focus on there. So we get those penetrating shots in. So if we have bounce, we do no damage. Okay, so you get the idea there. So don't think the guys, the, the King Tiger is an absolute god unit that can just solo the battlefield. It can't, it does need support. If it does get hit by a damage engine critical, by a enemy infantry lobbing an anti-tank grenade, for instance, or the King Tiger running into a mine, it's going to be in big trouble like I'm about to show. So, for instance, let's say we have the King Tiger over here and it's driving forward. So the King Tiger's coming forward. We're about to open up with it on our anti-tank guns. It's now here a mine. We keep picking away here from range, and then we get in our T-34 in as well. What you might have happen is the T-34 might decide to go ram the King Tiger as well, which will stun it. So, not normally want to ever ram with a full health T-34. There we go, we ram it. It becomes immobilized for a short amount of time, which then enables you to follow through with maybe an off-map artillery strike. But there you go, quite quickly there, the King Tiger has gone down um, due to just a well-placed mine and some anti-tank guns. Um, opening up as well. We didn't probably didn't even need the T-34 then to win that engagement. So there you go. So you can see the King Tiger can easily be killed if poorly microed and unsupported. Always push forward into enemy territory with sweepers so you avoid getting hit by mines and make sure you've got some infantry there to back it up and, you know, it's always good to use combined arms regardless of what you're doing. So the King Tiger against infantry is very effective. Um, 
you know, if you can just have it plonking, plonking rounds away at enemy infantry blobs, things like that will do very well. Though still, you know, don't uh, underestimate the power of, you know, of infantry getting too close. Because if you do get snared, again, as I just indicated, you'll get into a lot of trouble. But the King Tiger should be able to solo a single anti-tank gun on its own. Um, so let's get an anti-tank gun out, for instance. Let's save anti-tank gun. Selection, owner, enemy. Let's, like, let's give it even chance to set up. So we see the... Um, we see there's this gun, so we just could push up it. We could just flank it, but even to attack it from the front, we should do fairly well. So there you go. And there we go, we've killed the anti-tank gun. And then another thing we probably want to do then is then maybe blow up the Ziz gun so they can't be recruited or steal it with your own one of your own units. But uh, there you go, it's King Tiger. You know, if, if you support, if you push forward with the sweepers, make sure it's clear then the King Tiger can just take out this gun if it's just isolated like that. Don't feel too afraid to maybe engage your solo anti-tank gun. What you want to do is watch out whether there's multiple ones, then you want to be a bit more careful. But again, just be careful. If you can, tiger, King Tiger gets a bit low, gets past 50% health, then just put it back and repair it and go again. There's no need to be super aggressive with it and throw it away. It is super expensive unit, so if you do lose it, um, it could cost you the game. So don't just throw away such a valuable unit like this and be too too um, too greedy and, too, and overextend with it. Let's see the guards, these are PCS rifles, so they will do some damage to the King Tiger, but not much. Over time, it will add up. But you can see here. So you can see here, even though they just take, they are doing damage to us, we're, we're winning the engagement quite well. And again, if we take too much damage, we just pull away, pull back to our base and repair. Repair, get you know, our stern pioneers out, get them with the upgrade, with the sweepers, and then we can repair the King Tiger quite quickly. Even if you've got the mechanized nearby as well. This is why the mechanized comes in once if you, if you do have that upgrade, or you're going to have to have one of these out to call a King Tiger on. So you upgrade the mechanized with the repair pioneers, and then you have the sterns and the repair pioneers together to help re speed up the, uh, the repairs on the King Tiger. Um, King Tiger, as it's got such a lot of health, it will take um, maybe a minute or so to repair fully from, from low health. But um, here, you know, we're not we're not spending any resources here just to repair repair the tank, just some just time really. So um, you know, it's always good to just get the damage in. So he, uh, compared to our opponent, whereas he retreated all these guards right now, he, it's quite expensive to reinforce these three guard squads. So try and do the damage we can, pull back repair. You've inflicted a lot of manpower bleed, maybe even some squad wipes. And um, yeah, you know, if you keep doing that, you'll overall you'll win you win a game with the King Tiger. So here we have the IC up against the King Tiger as the final little engagement here. So you'll see these two guys open up. King Tiger slightly outranges the eye issues. I'll just let you guys fire each other here. King Tiger has this in IS-2, it's likely to bounce, and so is the IS-2 likely to bounce against the King Tiger. It's one of the few vehicles that the King Tiger will probably bounce up against. See, though, when the King Tiger does penetrate, it does a lot of damage. That's oh, IS-2's having a really bad time against penetrating this Tiger. King Tiger's doing really well. It's about five shots for the King Tiger to kill an IS-2. There you go. So you can see here, King Tiger definitely superior in that engagement. Definitely penetrated more than the IS-2 did. But generally, you both want to be trying to flanking each other and try and hit them on the rear, as that way you'll be a lot more likely to penetrate. And also the King Tiger does outrange even without the uh, the spearhead, but with the spearhead he outranges the IS-2 greatly. So make sure you utilize that spearhead um, to hit that enemy or to, or to, to give, give yourself vision to hit the enemy uh, tank before the enemy tank can fire back on you. So there we go, that's the King Tiger. So to round off the video guys, I'm going to briefly go over some OKW commanders I would highly recommend and maybe the commanders that you'd like to choose when playing as the OKW faction. So if you want to pick a commander with Panzer Fuser Leers, you'd want to pick either Breakthrough Doctrine or Grand Offensive Doctrine. Grand Offensive Doctrine is generally better for 1v1s and the Breakthrough Doctrine is better for team games as you've got access to the Jagdtiger, a long range tank destroyer. The Elite Armor Doctrine is also a great commander to pick guys for 1v1s, 2s, 3s and 4s. Uh, the Sturm Tiger is a great 
late game unit to smash enemy units now that is uh, fixed. They fixed the projectile, so it's really accurate when you when you fire with it now. The heat rounds, as we saw earlier, are super effective. You pop them on. All your ta all your tanks can 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 use this apart from obviously the Panzer two. Sorry, Panzer fours, Jag Panzers, Panthers. Your King Tigers activate the heat rounds, and that makes them more effective. And the Panzer Commander um, actually allows your tanks instead of upgrading the Pintle machine gun. Uh, for your tanks, you can upgrade the Panzer Commander and it increases their accuracy by, I believe, about 10%. And um, it allows you to call in off map artillery with your actual vehicle, which is awesome. So you can give yourself an off map artillery ability with this commander. Also, the emergency repairs is a great way to get your vehicles back in the fight without needing your stern pioneers around. So, elite, highly recommend elite armor. Firestorm is more of a 1v1 commander, less so maybe in team games. Um, the the flam for Panzer Hetzer is okay. It isn't a great unit. It's quite easily killed, and it, it's just fairly decent against infantry. Um, what you do with this commander is you can skip maybe going for the battle group of headquarters here because the Opal Blitz truck can act as a pretty much a medic truck like the American medic truck and activate a healing aura around your units. So that way you don't need the healing from your battle grouper. So you could go like a couple of your Volk Grenadiers, Opal Blitz truck into Mechanized with the Panzer two, and then and then the Puma. Uh, fortifications doctrine. Um, not super fan of this one. To uh, to be honest, it's a commander which gives you access to a lot of um, uh, static emplacements like the Pack Forty Three and the LEFH, and uh, these are easy to take out as they obviously can't move. So enemy players could just drop artillery on them and kill them. So I'm not a massive fan of fortifications doctrine myself. But guys, if you have it in your loadout and you wait to see what your opponent picks, and then you realise their commander choice isn't one that they gain any off that artillery from then this commander might make might, might work for you again grand offensive um you know great um you know great in one v ones and in team games uh, as you get the you know the panzer fuses we saw really good infantry um infrared sdgs so you can get that on your your obers and it's a late game so the stuka smoke drop guys is a great ability to drop in to maybe blind your enemy so they can't uh, fire on your on your vehicles that might be in danger or you could use it offensively to blind enemy support weapons from firing you firing on you as you push forward into enemy territory again the panzer commander there and also here you have the tiger tank which is a very an okw variant which allows it to get up to vegetacy four and five great um you know great as well just cheaper than the the the, the, the Cornix tiger um but uh it's got less health and and um but it has better maneuver, maneuverability than the king tiger uh, then on to the Luftwaffe Ground Forces. Luftwaffe Ground Forces is an okay commander. Um, again, the Stuka Smoke Drops, heavy fortifications, so you can build some S-mines, flak in places, barbed wire. Fulcrum Jägers themselves, we haven't covered Fulcrum Jägers in this boot camp, but they are a pretty decent elite infantry. Um, they're a four-man squad, and uh, they, got, they could be upgraded late, late game with uh, a second pair of FG-42, so they have four FG FG-42s in total, and they are very good at all ranges. Um, definitely a, a good elite squad. They don't have any ability to panzer fails or, or snare any vehicles, so they are going to be wrecked by any vehicle, so watch out with them. They also can camouflage as well, which is really handy. But it sort of allows your troops to move faster. And airborne assault is pretty decent in the late game, as um, you can access have access to two uh, JU87 stickers will strafe and, and target enemy vehicles. And so, you know, so you want to drop it. You need recon though for, the, for these planes to work. Uh, and it will just quickly strafe and take down enemy enemy vehicles. Also allows your Fulcrum Jägers to reinforce um, anywhere on the battlefield when this is active, which is really cool. So you, you can activate this and have your re your Fulcrum Jägers reinforced. Uh, Overwatch Doctrine is um, not too bad. The Jäger Light Infantry Squads are also kind of an elite infantry squad, which we haven't covered yet. They are um, really good at supporting um, your your front line. They're really good to they can camouflage and they're good to take out snipers. Um, Generally, you know, they come with G43s. Uh, late game, they obviously get Vectors 4 and 5, and they're really, really good in the late game. So it's just an elite squad there, which you get quite early, 1 CP. Uh, you also get access to early warning systems, so you can drop flares, um, put, put flares at your points to give yourself a lot of vision. And the Goliath is a great um, unit that you can build for, I believe, 100 munitions, uh, which can camouflage and cover, and it's a great way to explode in enemy blobs. Uh, or maybe take help take down enemy, you know, like a me medium tanks and things like that. If they if they rush onto it, you can get a good wipe with that unit. Uh, for the Falderam, infantry and friendly territory will receive a defensive bonus for the duration of the ability. So that's a good ability to pop if you are, are getting attacked and you want to make sure you hold the hold the hold your ground. So you pop that ability there for for munitions cost. LFH artillery again, 
Um, you know, this, this is an old map artillery. I'm, not, I'm never a fan of um, of static artillery pieces because, again, they can easily be off-map artillery. So, but again, you maybe get away with putting one onto the battlefield, uh, you know, as, and if it doesn't get um, bombarded by off-map artillery, it will eventually, work, you know, pay and do really well later on in the game. Sector Assault as well is pretty decent too because we'll supposed to recon attack enemy units in the designated area. So good offensively and defensively, that ability. Second to last commander, we have Scavenge Doctrine. Now, this um, commander gives access to the Ostwind um, out of your Schwerpanzer headquarters. And this is quite cool because you do not, I, I believe, do not need to upgrade the Schwerpanzer headquarters to have access to the Ostwind. So it allows you to get this out um, a lot sooner than you would, for instance, something like a Panzer IV. Uh, and the Oswind is a great unit against uh, infantry, uh, shoots down planes and against light, and does fairly okay against medium armor if it hits him in the rear, that is. Uh, thorough Savage's ability that allows you to salvage um, and get munitions as well as fuel with this uh, with this commander, which is quite nice. Jaeger Light Infantry, again, we've already talked about them. Infiltration Tactics is a great ability which allows you to be very low munitions cost you can lob many grenades from your Volks and uh, like your your uh, your Obers and units like that got an access for infiltration grenades and uh, they'll blow loads of grenades and a good way to potentially wipe uh, enemy infantry and support weapons and things like that also you get the 105 howitzer barrage uh, this is a very unique ability actually the more munitions you actually have stored up the more extra shells actually land so um if you manage to somehow uh, amass 500 munitions in a game and you drop this down for like i think this is maybe like a like it's a, this, this ability costs from like 100 to 200 munitions if i remember correctly um you'll get extra shells that, that, to drop down so maybe you want to save this up and then drop it down and maybe on SimCity to, to to help ensure the wipe so it's a very unique unique ability in the sense that it gets extra sh number of shells fired depending on, on the stored munitions uh, and finally we have a really good command i highly recommend this command it's one of my favorites special operations doctrine great in team games and in 1v1s um Get the Radius Silence, which allows uh, a, a unique ability here, which makes that all your units are hidden on the enemy minimap. So it's half of the, if, if if opponents are rely heavily heavily on the minimap, um, you can catch them off guard here. And this is great to pop this ability while and attack on multiple fronts. Um, Sturm Officer is a good unit. Which comes at two CPs. He can. Uh, it has quite a few abilities, which is great to complement your army. Um, can get up to five men, and and then eventually five against the SDG on the officer as well. So it's a quite a decent combat unit later on. It also can pick up drop weapons on the ground, which makes them even more effective. Again, infiltration tech grenades talked about that. Infrared SDGs already talked about that. Panther command tank is a very awesome. It's much better than the standard Panther. It has more range than the standard Panther. It also has some awesome abilities with it as well. It has. Um, so it can add mark target. So it, so you can pop a mark target on an enemy allied uh, vehicle, for instance. And uh, when, it, like the Soviet ability, when you penetrate that, you have an easier time of penetrating the enemy vehicle. And when you do penetrate, you will do more damage as well with that, which is awesome. And the the, the Panther command tank also has access to a flare ability, so that you can drive it with the Panther and use it to drop flares on a designated area and reveal a location for. Uh, for maybe if you have a Stuka, then you can you know give yourself recon via that flare to, to line up a good Stuka branch. Or in team games, you give recon to your teammates who then maybe could drop railway artillery or any off map any other off map artillery. And yeah, the Panther Command Tank is an amazing vehicle. It's one of the best vehicles in the game. So I've got massive amount of praise for the Panther Command Tank, when, especially when it gets uh, veteran C, you know, up to veteran C four and five. It's like an unstoppable machine, and it's an incredibly good unit. So guys, in summary, I highly recommend. Breakthrough Doctrine on your loader, especially if you're playing team games. Why? Because the Yagtiga is always super important to be able to call on into the late game. Your teammates might not have access to this commander, uh, or they might not have access to the Elephant if they're playing Ostir, and you'll definitely need a Yagtiga because it's one of the only, is the only unit in the game which outranges every single allied armor piece apart from the Soviet ISU. So having this in your loadout in the late game will really be beneficial. Uh, another other commanders that I highly recommend again is Elite Armor. Special Operations, and possibly Grand Offensive, and maybe uh, Overwatch Doctrine. The other commanders, yeah, they're okay, but they're not super important. Um, So yeah, there you guys go. So that's the end of a yet another bootcamp video for Company Heroes 2. Hope you found that enjoyable and you learned something. And if you did, please do hit that subscribe button. Would really appreciate it. And I'll be making way more Company Heroes 2 content and Company of Heroes 3 content in the coming weeks and months. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.